A Berea man who was a father and a former Navy sailor is dead after police say he was stabbed multiple times by his estranged wife's boyfriend. We heard graphic testimony today in the case against John Haywood, who is being charged in the latest murder in Lexington. Coming up, no surprise, the Cats are the pick again to win it all in the SEC. We've got the latest from SEC Media Day in Charlotte. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Barbara Bailey. Bill has the day off. We're learning new details this midday about the victim and suspect involved in a deadly late night stabbing in central Kentucky. Police say Jonathan Scaff was stabbed to death outside a home on Crest Court in Paris around 11 o'clock last night. Now Daniel Martin is charged in his murder. WKYT's Mark Barber has more on what led up to the stabbing. It's our top story at noon. Mark? The man who called 911 says after Jonathan Scaff was stabbed in the yard, he ran inside the house and locked the door, trying to protect himself. We're told he collapsed on the kitchen floor, just feet from his young daughter. Scaff's family says he was visiting his 18 month old, Summer Alexis, and his estranged wife at a home on Crest Court to figure out when he could have custody of her. His family tells us Scaff was a former volunteer firefighter in Berea and a former Navy sailor. The 27 year old walked out of the home around 11 o'clock last night, and that's when police say the boyfriend of his estranged wife attacked him. Scaff's family tells us he was stabbed by David Martin about six to eight times in the heart. Lungs, stomach, and back. According to officers, the 29 year old Cynthiana man who stabbed Scaff to death ran. He was caught an hour and a half later when canines found him hiding under a truck three quarters of a mile away. He is now charged with murder and tampering with evidence. Scaff's family says this happened while they were trying to heal from another tragedy. Seven years ago, Scaff's 16 year old brother was killed in a car crash. They say it is too soon to be planning another funeral. And they say they do need help paying for that funeral service. They say they have set up a donation fund in Scaff's name at the People's Bank in Berea. In Paris, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And Martin didn't want to talk to us from jail. Police haven't said what may have motivated the alleged attack. An Eastern Kentucky police officer is hospitalized this midday after being shot during a lengthy standoff. It started last night along Abbott Creek Road in Prestonsburg. Police say Robert Powers shot Officer Adam Dixon in the chest before barricading himself at a home. WKYT's Rebecca Smith is at the live desk now with the latest on the investigation. Good afternoon, Rebecca. Good afternoon to you, Barbara. We have dug up some new information on this guy involved in the standoff. Robert Powers has a history of theft and drug possession going back to 2009. Now, this all started with a traffic stop last night. An officer tried to pull over Powers. That's when investigators say he made a run for it. He ended up in a house where he was confronted by police. An officer ended up using his taser. But KSP says that it didn't work, and Powers shot Officer Adam Dixon. Powers then barricaded himself in the home. Troopers and KSP's special response team eventually arrested him. He was taken to the hospital with gunshot wounds. Troopers from Post 9 arrived on scene. They encountered a uh, Prestonsburg PD officer uh, had been shot, as well as a uh, subject had uh, barricaded himself inside the home. Now, Officer Dixon was flown to St. Mary's Hospital in Huntington, West Virginia. Police tell us he is stable. At the live desk, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Rebecca, thank you. There's no word on who owns the home that was involved in that standoff. We want to warn you, some of the police testimony was gruesome during a hearing for Lexington's latest murder case this morning. John K. Wood is charged with murder, abuse of a corpse, and evidence tampering. Police say he killed 58-year-old James Doug Holiness last week on the train tracks near Manowar and Nicholasville Road. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is outside Fayette County Court Complex now with the latest on the case. And again, a warning, some of the details are disturbing. Michelle. We heard graphic testimony today in the case against John K. Wood, who is being charged with murdering a man in Lexington last week. Hey, Wood. 
Kaywood was in court today, suspected of committing Lexington's latest murder. Kaywood is being charged with killing James Holiness near the train tracks off Man of War, close to Nicholasville Road. Today's testimony revealed that Kaywood told a person he knew he had killed Holiness. That person then notified his parents, who called police. Detective Robert Wilson described how police discovered the murdered 58 year old the morning of October 14th. They did a quick search of the area, um, and in the campfire, they located what appeared to be the head of an adult male flight. Officers also uh, searched the area approximately 100 yards away. They located a, a headless body. Detective Wilson said Holiness had been stabbed upwards of 80 times. Police say they found Kaywood asleep less than 100 yards from the murdered body. Kaywood is being charged with murder, along with abuse of a corpse and evidence tampering. During testimony, Detective Wilson said that Kaywood first denied involvement, but later admitted to the stabbings. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Michelle, thank you. And all charges against Kaywood have been waived to a grand jury. A prayer vigil will be held tonight in Maysville for the five victims killed in a devastating fire. A couple tried desperately to save their five children from the flames, but they were overwhelmed by the heat and smoke. Police say Lori Doppelhauer died along with three of her children, ages 10, 3, and 1. Her 15 year old and 7 year old daughters were saved. A neighbor, 68 year old Larry Brickles, was also killed. The fire gutted three houses and damaged two others. Well, it is another picture perfect fall day here in the bluegrass with sunny skies and warmer temperatures. And this is expected to continue through the end of the work week. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now with a look ahead. Yeah, I was about to say that picture perfect that you were just talking about. We're going to have that tomorrow. We're going to see that same title on Friday. Things will change towards your weekend, but next 72 hours look really good. Richmond Cam, there you are looking pretty nice. 66 degrees. Holding on to the 60s as of right now, but I want to show you Monticello. Look down south. You guys finished off in the 30s. Here you are already in the 70s. This is one of those days you're like, what in the world do I even wear during the morning hours? But by the afternoon, there you go. You can get rid of all those layers. You can even go with some shorts. 72 degrees, perfect weather. And then we look across First Alert Defender. You got a little uh, system to the s north of us, but that's going to stay north of us, not really affecting us. But look how active is it, it is back west. A lot of that heading our direction. I'll show you when you can expect that. Just about 10 minutes. All right, Micah, thank you. The basketball cats are already the preseason top ranked team in the nation. And now they're also the unanimous pick to win the Southeastern Conference. That's just one of the headlines from SEC Media Day, where Tyler Eulis and Marcus Lee took the mic this morning. WKYT's Dave Baker has your big blue coverage now from Charlotte, North Carolina. Buzz? Thanks, Barb. We're here at the Ballantine Hotel in Charlotte, site of the SEC Basketball Media Days. They have it here in conjunction with the headquarters of the SEC Network. And you know what? No surprise that Kentucky is once again the team that everybody wants to talk about. And John Calipari and his cats, they're the people that everybody wants to talk to as they are once again the pick to win it all in the SEC. Well, you know, I really don't think about it much. I'm not, we're not trying to live up to anyone's expectations. We have our own as a team. and. You know, that's to be number one. Honestly, you know, we're not coming out to try to lose games. We just want to go out there and win and, you know, try to get to the national title. Kentucky was the overwhelming pick to win it all in the SEC. Might be surprised that Vanderbilt was the second choice. Texas A&M number three. And Tyler Eulis and Scal Labissiere, who has not yet played at Kentucky, they're the two Wildcats on the SEC all first team. We've got a lot more on that coming up in sports. All right, thank you very much. And you can see the Cats in action during the Blue White game Tuesday night at Rupp Arena. It will air live on the SEC network. A local restaurant is stepping up to help a charity hit hard by Hurricane Joaquin. Last month, a cargo ship sank off the coast of Haiti. On board were medicine, shoes, and Christmas gifts that the Waves of Mercy organization had spent the last year collecting. Tonight, from 5 until 9, all three Saul Good locations in Lexington will donate 50% of sales to Waves of Mercy.